if you've got the bandwidth, click the gear icon in the corner of the video player, select your preferred quality, and enjoy the video in HD. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice East Asian chest. I think it's Korean. And uh, there's not much wrong with it. It's in good shape, except that the back is coming off of it. First reaction is, oh geez, I'll nail the back back on. And when I looked closely at it, I saw that it was pegged on with wooden pegs. And in fact, square, probably hand-hewn square wooden pegs. So I want to reattach this back the same way that it was originally. So the first thing I'm going to do is use some wedges and uh, try to carefully remove the back. I need to access some of the original unbroken pegs and get to these areas where the pegs are broken. And so as I'm separating this, I'm revealing some entire pegs and a couple of more broken ones down here. So this is good. I'll continue this until I get this off. I'm not having luck getting any of these out. They, uh, they don't want to seem to back up. So I'm going to have to drill them out. But I'm going to have to drill very carefully because these pegs are square. So you can see here's the head of one of the pegs and it's square. So I'm going to have to drill these out with a smaller drill bit than the square and then take a small chisel and chisel them out because I'm going to make square pegs and uh, I want them to match exactly what was there. So now I'll carefully chisel out the old peg. So measuring up the uh, existing pe pegs, they seem to be about one quarter by one quarter. So I'm going to rip a few pieces of pine uh, slightly larger than one quarter by one quarter. And then I'm going to whittle them down to be the tapered shape. Now I'm going to cut these to length, uh, about two and a half inches long. So now I'll take these blanks. First I'm going to shape them a little on the sander and then I'll uh, whittle them down so they fit. I have to make a peg for each individual hole. They're all different sizes. I need to take a little more off the top of this one. All right, so now I've got to drill out uh, the holes where the broken pegs are. I'm trying to mark the center here. And luckily, I have a, I remembered I have a, a tapered bit. So that these holes will be tapered to accept the tapered pegs. And some of them broke off, you know, above the top here, so I flush them off. Now I'm ready to install the back. Uh, each one of these pegs I sort of individually made for each hole, so I've taped them where they belong. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in each one of the holes I drilled. Uh, that will hold the peg to the case. The back does, itself doesn't need to be glued to the pegs because they're wedge shaped.
next step will be to flush these off and put a little stain on them. All right, here we go. This nice uh, Asian cabinet. I think the customer said it was Korean, I believe. Uh, not much wrong with it, except that the back was coming on. And I discovered that the back was held on by handmade square pegs, so I decided to do the same thing. I made the pegs, so I put it back on. The whole time I was wondering why so many of the original pegs broke. I couldn't understand it. When I went to put it back on, I realized that the back had shrunk maybe three sixteenths of an inch. I couldn't do anything about that. I pegged it back on anyway. I'm, I'm hoping that the shrinkage was just a one-time event. And I suspect that maybe that's why those pegs broke. But at any rate, it's back on now. It looks pretty good. What is it, Ella? <laughs> no, the chicken.